Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create today and find out how you can go see what she has made as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I hope that you've been enjoying the 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I know that I love trying to stretch the supplies I have and see how I can use them in different ways. And then I get to be surprised and find out right along with you what Danny has decided to use and create her 4 projects with. If you're new to my channel or new to the 4 on Friday series, what happens is every 2-3 to three weeks my friend Danny and I get together she participates on her blog, I participate here on YouTube, and we each create four new projects using a product, technique, or tool that we have chosen. We used to do this and we would always select the same idea, but we have reinvented it, and so what I do today is not necessarily what she's going to be doing. Once you're done with my video, make sure to go see her blog post. It is linked at the very top of that description box below. See what she has created and make sure to leave her some love. If you would like to see more videos in the series, I do have the 4 on Fridays playlist in that description box below as well. For my projects today, I'm going to be creating 4 new cards using scraps of 6x6 pattern paper and the sketch from the latest sheet load of cards, June 2021. As you know, I always give the dimensions of a single card, and I think this month is especially good for using up some of those scraps. I got out a variety of 6x6 paper pads that I have some scraps left in. Now you definitely don't have to use 6x6 paper pads, you can use your 12x12 as well, but I just have scraps sitting in these and I wanted to try to use them. What I usually do after I make a card, the scraps go in the front or back just right along with the paper pad. Sometimes it just sits upside down like that in my basket. Other times I have like a little plastic bag that keeps everything inside, but I do have some scraps in there. I won't be using all of these paper pads for today's cards. I did get out five different ones with scraps. I just kind of wanted to show you how I store my scraps with my 6x6 pads. I'm not sure actually yet which ones I'm going to use either. So you're going to find out right along with me as I'm creating the video. Now if I add any other products or tools, which of course I'm going to have to, I will let you know in the voiceover. But if I ever leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get started with the process, I do have a channel member shout out. I recently had a member upgrade to paper trimmer level, so I would like to say a great big thank you to LVK. Thank you for the upgrade and your continued support. Thanks as well to all of my channel members. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. For my first card, I'll be using some scraps from this Simple Stories Love and Adore pad and of course the printable with the dimensions. Now I won't go over those dimensions a whole lot, but I will link the video in the description box below where you can download the printable for yourself. From the paper pad, I grabbed a couple skinny strips for that strip across the center and I will actually be matting both of my pattern papers today with a smaller print pattern paper. For the piece that goes on the back, I chose the floral and then once again another piece that could mat that. 
Unfortunately, I missed the first cuts. I forgot to turn on my camera, but all I did was cut down the piece of pink and white heart paper to three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Now, I originally got out two pieces of the floral pattern because I knew neither was big enough to be the entire piece, but I knew that if I split it up, that I would be able to cover that opening with the strip across the center. So I just cut that piece to three inches wide and then cut that in half, and you'll see here that it filled the background of the pink pattern paper at least with a border. Now for the strip across the center, on the original sheet load, it actually calls for this piece to be cut in half to spread across, but because my scrap was already four and a quarter inches wide, I just left it at that width and cut each piece the height I needed it to be for the final card. For the final cut, which is at one inch, I did bring in a little piece of scotch blue removable tape to hold that in place while I made the cut, and I actually put this same piece of tape to the side and I'll use it later on. Now this next part isn't exactly using scraps from the paper pad, but I did use a page that I might not use otherwise. With these little cut aparts, I chose one of those to use as my sentiment, and I ended up choosing and cutting out the card that reads, You Are My Happy. Now, I want to border on this to help it stand out a little bit from the background of the card, but I also want the paper below it to be seen. So I brought in a scrap of vellum and cut that so it would make a nice border around my cut apart piece. All of the main parts for the card are now done, so I brought in a pre-made top fold card base and started putting my card together. This is pretty much like my process video for the June 2021 sheet load of cards. I just make sure that I have that center strip cover up the opening in the floral paper. Now at this point I decided I wanted to add a little bit more decoration behind my sentiment, so I brought in the rest of that scrap of vellum along with this leaf die cut which was made by Richard Garay, I believe, and I cut one of those out. Now you'll notice on this sketch my sentiment is originally centered, but I wanted mine to go to the right. So I placed the leafy vine behind my sentiment sticking out from the left, and I used a couple glue dots to adhere that in place. Now because the card itself is pretty flat so far, I did go ahead and bring in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and I added a couple pieces of that to the back of my sentiment and got that adhered on the card. And here is a look at the finished card. To use up some more of those scraps, I did end up putting a couple strips on the inside of the card. For card number two, I'm using the Echo Park Let's Be Mermaids pad, and I got this on super discount at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago for only a dollar. I chose three pieces from the pad, and once again, I will be matting with another pattern paper. I cut down all of my pieces per those dimensions on the printable. I will be using the striped and the starfish pattern paper for the main pieces, and then I will be using that one sheet of polka dot paper to mat both of those. Since this paper pad was called Let's Be Mermaids, I thought this was a great chance to use the stamp sets from the latest not too shabby kit, Mermaids and Friends. Now there aren't any kits left, but you still can get some of these stamps, so I will make sure to link those in the description box below. I also brought in a circle of cardstock that I had pre-cut off camera, and you'll see it has some stitching around the edges. And because I want my stamps, the two starfish I chose, to hang off of the circle, I did put a little piece of blue painter's tape on the back of that to hold it on the misty while I got my stamp set up and for stamping. Now once I had all three of those in place, I picked it up with the door of my Misty and inked all of those up with VersaFine Onyx Black. 
Because I knew that I was going to be coloring with some alcohol based markers, I did bring in my heat tool and dried this for probably about 10 seconds before I brought in my markers for coloring. Since that ink isn't necessarily made for alcohol markers, I just feel like this kind of heat sets it so I can use these. To do the coloring today, it's just very basic. I brought in two of my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers. I have the Burnt Orange Blend and the Aqua Blue Blend. I just used the light and medium and I colored the whole thing in with the light and went in and added some shadows with the medium and then blended that back out with the light. Again, just super simple coloring. I tried to find colors that would match the pattern paper because that one strip across the center are some little starfish. For this card, I will be using a clear card base, and I do have a video where I talk all about the material I use. I will link that in the description box below. But once all of my pieces were ready, I just started assembling this card, and for this one, I placed everything onto the front of the card base. While I'm working on putting this card front together, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Today's question is actually from a channel member. That is one of the perks of die cut and hire. You can submit questions. And John Yell would like to know, what is your go-to pattern paper brand? Make sure to leave your answer in that comment section below. And if you are gonna answer it, make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I make sure to see your answer. I have a couple different favorites, which are Echo Park and Simple Stories. Now within Echo Park, they also have the Bella Boulevard line and I usually like all of theirs. And here recently, I have been buying more papers from Photoplay. I am really enjoying their designs as well. And when I go to my local scrapbook store, they usually catch my eye and I end up buying a few pieces. Once again, because the card itself is pretty flat right now, I brought in my foam tape and added a couple pieces to the back of the focal point before placing that onto the card front. Now I don't yet have a spot on the inside for my personal message, so off camera I cut a piece of white cardstock that is the same size as that back mat. And what I do is put adhesive on the back of that and then I place it, you'll see there, behind the mat on the front so that it is centered in the back and gets covered up by the decoration on the front. That was long and rambling but hopefully that made sense. I wanted to finish this off with a little bit of sparkle so I brought in my Moonshine Confetti Mix from Cartwright Sequins and I will be placing three of these onto the stamped focal point with some glue dots. Now that first one I did cover up a little oopsie with my marker where I got out of the line but the others I just tried to make a complete triangle with those. I use my jewel picker to select one of the confetti pieces and put one on each of those glue dots. And here's a look at the finished card. For my third card, I chose a birthday themed paper pad from American Crafts and I went ahead and just took out some pieces for my card. Now this card is actually going to be a shaker card, but it will be a frameless shaker card. I start off this card the same way as the others by cutting down my pattern papers. Now you will see here at first, I cut my sentiment strip across the center with all of the birthday words to the one inch tall. But I decide later that I'm actually going to use this for the sentiment as well as that strip across the middle. So I end up bringing back in the piece that I was gonna put back in my paper pad as scraps. And that was one and a quarter inches tall. So I ended up cutting the mat for this at one and a half inches tall. That way there is room for the shaker bits and you can still see all of those words on the final card. 
To make my frameless shakers, I will be using 3 mil Duralar and I just got this pad at Michael's so you can usually get a discount or a coupon on that. What I do is measure each of the pieces that I want to turn into a shaker and then cut the piece of Duralar so it is one inch longer on both measurements. So for the strip across the middle, the original piece is one and a quarter inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. So I cut my Duralar to two and a quarter inches tall by five and a quarter inches wide. I do that same thing for my other piece of pattern paper with the dimensions and then I am ready to make my shakers. The first part of those shakers is to put together my sequin mix and I just got out a few little packages of sequins that I thought went with the colors in the pattern paper. I mix these up in a little square Dollar Tree container with a teeny tiny square spoon from the Dollar Tree as well. Once that was all mixed up, I was ready to make my shakers. What I did was I laid the strip across the center, face down in the center of the corresponding piece of Duralar. To hold that in place, I just got a new piece of Scotch Blue removable tape and I just put that on one edge. Then to know later where I will be doing my folding and so I can cut the corners off, I went in and I folded each edge back around the piece of pattern paper. Then you'll see here I need to cut off those corners so when I fold it back later they won't overlap and I can get a nice seal. I brought in my ATG and added adhesive to the three sides of the back. I left the one with the piece of the tape without adhesive because I will need that as an opening for my sequins. So I grab a little spoonful and just spoon those into the top and then once those are in there I add more ATG to the back and I adhere down that Duralar. Now this is something where you will want to use a nice strong adhesive so your sequins don't come apart. Once I had that ready, it got centered on the border strip. The next piece of pattern paper went pretty much the same way for the shaker, but for this one, because I don't want my sequins to fall all the way from the top to the bottom of that background, I put some adhesive across the center that will be covered up later with the happy birthday border strip. This way the sequins will kind of stay in their section. I put that back onto my piece of Duralar, cut off the corners and then I started to fill it. You'll notice this time that I only had put adhesive on the long edges for now because I need to fill those pockets from each end before sealing up the top and bottom. Now if I had this to do over I probably would have just put one strip of adhesive across the center because those sequins stayed pretty high in the card and it might have been nicer to get more of those lost behind that other pattern paper. But live and learn. I just wanted to show you this technique. Off camera I got a card base ready and I cut another scrap from the pattern paper pad that was four and a quarter by five and a half to fill that card front. I matted my final shaker and then I started putting the card together. Once I had the first shaker onto the card front with that confetti paper, I needed to bring in some foam tape because there is a little dip in there and I knew that I needed to lift the second shaker piece up off the card front to account for that. So I put one wide strip across the center of the card and then I brought in my quarter inch foam tape to put a piece on each of the edges and that way when it goes on the card front it sits nice and just straight across and there's no dipping in it. Here are a couple looks at the finished card and you'll see on this one also I used some more scraps on the inside for decoration.
And now it's time for the fourth and final card today, which I am using this 6x6 six six Summer Days paper pad from Echo Park. I did get out quite a few scraps. I don't think I ended up using them all, but I went in just like before and I cut down all of my pieces so I would have them for the final layout. Now I do for this one, I grab the second clear card base that I had left over from card number two. And on this one, instead of putting just a piece of white cardstock on the inside, I'm going to cut down a piece of white cardstock to be an inner card. And what I do, I cut that so it's four and a quarter inches tall by six and a half inches wide. So when I fold it in half, it will mat pattern piece A on the front. I cut down a white cardstock strip for the front for the little skinny strip, and then it is time to start putting this card together. I adhere the larger piece of pattern to the front center of the inner card, and then adhesive gets placed on the back of this, and it gets centered on the inside of the clear card base. Now this is kind of a fun one, where the clear card base opens from bottom to top, and the inner one opens from left to right. After that's ready, I map the center strip. Now I did have a little extra white cardstock on the bottom of that, so I just brought in my little trimmer quickly and took care of that trying to get even white borders. Once that center strip was in place on the front of the card, I brought in some pre-cut and pre-printed sentiments that I had from a previous sheet load of cards free printable. I will link that video in the description box below that tells you how you can download this. Now originally these were all made so there was more room on the bottom of the sentiment. So I brought in my little photo trimmer and I cut the excess off and then I cut the piece of purple pattern paper so it was a nice little border around the sentiment. I adhered these two pieces together and then placed it onto my card front. Now you'll notice on this I do kind of put it to the top of the card. I don't necessarily center it, but I do try to get even borders on the left, top, and right sides of the card. Now once again to finish this off, I want a little bling, so I brought in some clear holographic sequins and I added five to the card front. Originally I was going to see just what that row of three looked like, but I didn't think that stood out enough. So then I kind of scattered five glue dots on the card front, both on the card stock and the clear card base. And then I placed a sequin onto each of those. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's four cards using that same sketch, some scraps, and a few different techniques. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to go visit Danny's blog post, it is linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above, and if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.